So let's go over how to write a chemical formula. Again, the first thing written in a formula is always the metallic cation. And then you write the non-metallic anion. So down here is that example, Na plus 1, Cl minus 1. You don't write it like this, Cl minus in it. We notice I put in the oxidation numbers, and you should do that too whenever you practice. And I gave you an example of the polyatomic ion. A really neat rule, which makes life easy, and it works most of the time. It's called the crisscross rule. If you want to make a formula, it's very simple. Let's take sodium and sulfur. You look on your periodic table that I gave you, and it'll tell you that sodium is plus one normally. Sulfur, group six, gains two electrons, but you look on your periodic table, it'll tell you it's minus two mostly. Okay, so again, you see the charges don't match, but you can write it like this, enlarge it here so you can see it. You crisscross the oxidation numbers. Okay, now remember, these oxidation numbers are not how many sodiums you have, they're just the charge that sodium takes on when it bonds. This is the charge that sulfur takes on when it bonds. So you take the one and you put it down here at the right, and you take the two and you put it down here at the left. Now it's indicating number. That's why we wouldn't put a negative two here. And your formula would look like this, Na2S. Although I prefer that you write it leaving in the oxidation numbers. Okay. Here's another example. Magnesium, if you look on your periodic table, would be plus two. Sulfur is minus two. But notice you can write it as MgS rather than the Mg2S2. And that's because, again, we try to simplify. This here is an empirical formula. Remember, that simple ratio. If you crisscross, you get 2 and 2, Mg2S2. But 2 and 2 can be simplified into 1 and 1. Okay? Also notice you don't have to write the 1s. We usually just write NaCl like this. When we deal with polyatomic ions, we just write them as is. We look on the chart that I gave you, and you'll find a whole bunch of polyatomic ions, and you just put them in as they are. I like to use parentheses, because then you know this OH acts like a negative anion. Instead of here, it looks like H is minus 1, but it isn't. The whole thing is minus 1. So I like to write it with parentheses. Down here, we got an example with aluminum sulfate. Notice I put sulfate in parenthesis. Aluminum actually has a plus three charge, see how the three would go there, and the sulfate has a minus two charge and the two goes there. Sometimes the atoms don't have the oxidation we'd expect, so if you look on your chart you'd see like nitrogen should be minus three, that's the first one, but nitrogen could be a whole bunch of stuff. Here's some of them it can be, and it can even be more than that as well.